Hi, it's Trista with Polite Paws, and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about nail trimming tonight. So let me get this going, and we will start the presentation. So first off, I am not a veterinarian or a groomer, um, but I've done a lot of husbandry and grooming techniques on my own dogs and learned some things. And of course, as a trainer, I can come to this task with that viewpoint in mind. So I'm excited to share with you what I've learned about nail trimming. So what we're going to cover in this little mini course, we're going to talk about why you might want to trim at home, um, when you should trim your dog's nails, the anatomy of a nail, what conditioning is, what the different techniques and tools you might use to trim your dog's nails, and then we're going to have some demos. Um, I've got some videos recorded, and of course, um, for the live presentation, we have questions, but you'll just have to reach out to me. I'm sure you have my contact information if you have specific questions. So why would you even want to tackle the job of trimming your dog's nails at home? It can be kind of a challenging one. So um, first off, your dog might not need professional grooming. So if you have a doodle mix of some sort, your dog is going to need regular grooming. If you have a Shih Tzu, um, there's a lot of dogs that require professional grooming. But if your dog doesn't, there might not be the opportunity for them to have regular nail trims. So don't forget about that. If your dog is not going to the groomer regularly, they still need to have their nails trimmed. Um, maybe your dog does go to the groomer, but their nails grow so quickly or your grooming is infrequently um, that they need to have little maintenance sessions in between their formal appointments. Maybe your dog has had a negative experience at the groomer or is anxious at the groomer or the vet. So it might be good to transfer that experience to a home setting to help ease those um, fears and anxieties. I think it's a great opportunity to bond with your dog. So um, it, it's a good experience to have with your dog and you'll do training and conditioning along the way. Can definitely help. And then of course, it's a training exercise too. So that's always going to be a good mental and physical outlet for your dog. And then, of course, you can save money. Um, nail trims for my vet. I don't go to a groomer, but if I have a nail trim at my vet and I'm not there for a regular appointment, I think it's like $15. So that can add up. Uh, it's easy to do at your, at your own home if you follow these, these techniques. <laughs> All right. So when do we need to groom our dog's nails? Hopefully these are really obvious examples of when it's time to groom. Um, it's really important to keep them maintained because if there's any pressure on the nails and the floor, your dog's feet can have um, serious issues and pain. Imagine walking around with your um, toenails overgrown so much that it actually changes, this, changes the way that you walk. So when your dog's nails are audible on a hard surface floor, if they're tapping on the floors, it's time to trim your dog's nails. They're too long. So when the nails touch the floor, when the ground touch the ground, and then if you look at the your dog's feet from the side, kind of the silhouette, and the nails go past the pads of their feet, it's a bit too long. But on average, it's going to be every four to eight weeks, depending on your specific dog's activity, how often they're walking on concrete, because that's going to naturally sand and wear down their nails. Um, and then of course, how fast your dog's nails grow. I actually knew of someone whose dog um, chewed their own nails down. So that was unusual, but it did save them from having to have them groom. Might have had other issues though. And then of course, um, keeping your dog's nails trimmed can help avoid foot and joint issues, especially if your dog is older and might be dealing with arthritis or might be prone to having joint issues. It's really important to keep those nails in check. That's really going to help them stay healthy. So there's several different tools that you can use to get this job done. The first one is a scratching board, which is my favorite because it gives your dog complete agency, meaning this is something that they do on their own. They actually wear down their own toe, toenails or um, 
clause. So this is my board that I made and you can see how big it is. It's just kind of a standard size sheet of sanding paper. I bought the roughest or coarsest grain that I could get. It's the lowest number um, that you can find at your local hardware store. And I just use staples to secure it. So this is my scratching board. Um, you might use an emery board or a nail file. So basically, instead of your dog scratching the board, you would use this to scratch your dog's nails and wear them down. Um, still need to condition it though. And I feel like dogs might still find this slightly aversive depending on how you do it. Um, the scratching board is gonna give them full autonomy. It's something they completely do on their own. Clippers. So um, I do use clippers for Bell. You'll see that in a little bit. Um, these are probably the riskiest tool that you can use because you're most likely to clip a quick um, using the clippers. So if this is the first time you've tried to trim your dog's nails, I wouldn't recommend using the clippers. But this is a fast way to take a lot of lengths down, especially if you can see the quick. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Make sure that this. Oh, there's Bitsy. Make sure that the size of your clippers match the size of your dog. So if you have a large breed, you're going to want larger clippers. Um, I have small to medium breeds, so this is the size that I have. And then um, last is the Dremel. So there are quite a few different options on the market today for a Dremel. You can see mine has the flat disc attachment happening. Um, the image that I have on the screen is like a rotary piece that I can um, also came with this specific Dremel, but there are a few different brands of these now. Mine also came with a guard that you can fit on the top. Um, I find it kind of annoying, but you might find it useful, um, especially starting out. So those are all the tools that um, I've used before and I have some experience with, and we're going to cover those techniques today. So some considerations you might have in choosing your specific tool. Um, I definitely love the scratching board best, especially if you have an energetic or anxious dog or a dog that likes to dig. So um, you can just put that energy right into an exercise that is going to actually help them stay healthy. So I love the scratching board. Um, if your dog is really chill, maybe they aren't that energetic, maybe you have a guardian breed, then the Dremel or the Emery board might be nice because you can just condition them to stay calm. If you've already um, done relaxation training or mat training with your dog, then that would be a good situation to use to um, use the Emery board or use the Dremel. Clippers can be helpful too, like I said, especially if you have a lot of nail, like um, if you ended up getting a rescue and their nails really long, but hopefully the rescue would have taken care of it. But anyway, it's probably the riskiest option. Like I said, if you're nervous about clipping the quick, if you have your dog has black nails, I wouldn't necessarily start with the clippers. I would start with one of the other tools till you have a little more experience and then maybe graduate to the clippers. So. And, you know, there are cost considerations, too. So the scratching board was really affordable. Um, the emery board is the clippers. You know, these are like 10 to 20 bucks. But the Dremel, I think you could spend 50 to to $100 on the Dremel. So that's another consideration to keep in mind. So let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of a nail and what you need to know to not cause your dog harm. So you can see in the image there, the ideal length of a nail is cleared of the floor. Obviously this nail is too long, it's touching the floor and you can see how far the quick has grown to the end of the nail. And then this image is just showing the angle. You do wanna make sure um, you're angling kind of down when you, you use a clipper or um, even the Dremel, you're gonna want to do the right angle and you'll see that in my video in just a minute. Um, the click is live tissue. So this red section here contains blood vessels and it is flesh. So it is really important to not clip a quick. And you're much more likely to clip a quick using clippers, um, obviously, than you will use a, using a scratching board or a Dremel. So um, always best to try those options first. 
You can extend the nail by squeezing on the nail bed just above the nail. Um, that will actually make the nail kind of pop out a little bit and you'll be able to see the quick a little bit easier. Again, use conditioning for that. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but watch for any stress signals to make sure your dog is comfortable with that. There's Belle just came in from cold potty outside. Um, the quick will recede. So as you trim your dog's nails, especially using a scratching board or a Dremel, the quick will gradually back away from the end of the nail. So you'll be able to gradually take more and more off, um, especially if you repeat the process. So if you did the scratching board today, you might only be able to get a little bit off, but that quick will recede. And then in a few days, you'll be able to use a scratching board again because that quick will have um, receded a little bit. So just know that that will be a gradual process. Not so much the case if you use clippers, though. So if you use one of the sanding options, that's going to be a little better to encourage the quick to gradually back up and move away from the edge of the nail. White nails are going to be by far the easiest to see the quick and to use clippers with, and I'll show you an image of that in a minute. Black nails are a lot harder because you cannot actually see the quick, so I recommend just taking a little bit off at a time using one of the sanding methods are best for black nails. There is a little trick though I'm going to show you on how to look and see when to stop with black nails. And don't forget about your dew claws. So the dew claws are um, the thumb basically of the dog. Some dogs have their dew claws removed when they're pups. A lot of vets aren't doing that anymore, so more of our dogs have dew claws. Some dogs have dew claws on the front only, some have front and back, some have double dew claws depending on their breed. So don't forget about the dew claws. Even though they're not going to be tapping on the ground, they can still grow and actually circle back into your dog's flesh and be painful. So here's a little more info on the anatomy of a nail. So you can see um, the kind of safe space to clip. Um, this left image here is a white nail, I would say is, it will be much easier to see that, that quick in a white nail. On the right, I'm showing um, how you can look at the end of a black nail to see how close you're getting to danger area and to that quick. So if you start to see that kind of white foggy area, you can probably go a little more. As you see that black dot emerge, you should be slowing down or stopping. And then of course, at this point, you might actually have a little bit of bleeding. Um, it is always helpful to have um, powder on hand too if you're unfamiliar with things and and um, the goal is always of course to avoid the quick um, so let's go for that so conditioning before you actually get to the point of you know taking the clippers and actually clipping your dog's nails we want to participate in something called conditioning so if you've taken my private courses um, private session or classes you've heard me talk about conditioning conditioning is really simple it's just the concept of having associations with an object or an environment and we want those associations to be positive. So um, classical conditioning is what we're going to use in the process of nail trimming. Um, and this is an image uh, about Pavlov's concept of uh, classical conditioning and the research he did with dogs and salvation. Salivation. <laughs> but basically what we want to do is make sure that anytime your dog sees the tool that you're using, they should have happy thoughts. And in the video I'm going to show you in just a minute, you'll see how excited my Bitsy gets when she sees the scratching board because she know it's, knows it's going to be a fun game. If you get the clippers out and your dog runs the other direction and hides, you already have some negative conditioning happening or has happened, and you're going to need to start with a new tool. So either buy new clippers or try a whole nother technique because this has become a poison tool. Um, it has become a poison situation. So we want to start fresh and very simply. So let's say you want to make your dog um, like the Dremel. You want to have positive associations with the Dremel. You just got it, came in the box. Um, it's on your front porch. You unpack it. 
all you're going to do is actually set this down on the floor for your dog to interact with it, have them sniff the tool, and then you're going to give them a really yummy treat. Or you could let them play a game of tug, or maybe um, throw the ball for them to fetch. Something that they really love should happen after they see and sniff the Dremel. And you're going to do that just a little bit every day. So maybe you just do a one minute session the first day or maybe the first three days where the dog just sees the Dremel and you're not even touching it and they sniff it and they get a treat. And then you're going to gradually work towards actually picking up the Dremel. So the Dremel is in your hand um, and you're going to spend a few days on that. And then you're going to work on actually turning on the Dremel so your dog gets used to the sound. Um, and again, this is going to be a several week process before you actually touch the Dremel to your dog's feet. And I know that sounds long, but just think about one or two minutes every day. It's just a tiny bit every day that's gonna really pave the way to have a really great relationship with your dog and to make this process really simple. Um, if you're not doing the Dremel, if you're doing the clippers, or if you're doing the emery board, you're gonna do the same thing nice and slow. Then you need to condition your dog to have their feet and nails touched. So that's a totally different thing. That's a handling thing. So I would maybe not do it in the same session as your tool, but maybe the same day. You're just going to gently touch your dog's feet and then you're going to treat them. If they're already not enjoying that, you can start with just pets on the back and gradually work down to the feet. Um, I found with brushing my dog when we first got Bitsy the rescue, I could not brush her. She went crazy when I pulled her brush out. I'm not really sure why she had that opinion already. Um, but all I did was just slowly introduce her to the brush with treats. Um, I got a brush that was really comfortable for her. And I just slowly introduced her to the experience of brushing. And sometimes she still doesn't really like, like her belly brush, but I can do two strokes on the back and one stroke on her belly which she tolerates really well and she's getting treats the whole time and now when I get the brush out she comes running to get her brushes because she generally likes it now and it's a positive association so take it slow um, that's really going to help in the long run uh, the handling and tool needs to be taken care of each you know each in its own um, compartment so to speak the best thing you can do is start young. So if you get an eight week or 10 week old puppy, now is the time to be handling their feet, to be introducing them to the tools, um, take it nice and slow. If um, your breeder might actually have started that process for you. So if, if you have a really careful breeder, that, that would be a great thing too, because they'll already get the ball rolling for you. Start with foot and nail handling, um, create positive associations with the tool. Again, if your dog already has negative associations with the tool, just trade with a friend to have a fresh tool or try one of the other methods I'm talking about in this course. Um, so you want to go slowly, watch for any stress signals. If you notice any stress signals at all, Go ahead and take things back a notch. Um, if you were putting pressure on the nail bed, maybe go back to just handling the feet, taking it a little slower. And then a few days later, move on to that more challenging um, situation. Make sure too you're using high enough value treats to really be a motivator for your dog to have positive uh, conditioning and happy conditioning. Um, and then make sure to go at your dog's pace. Some dogs are going to pick up on this really quickly and, and create those positive associations quickly. If your dog has a history with grooming that's negative or um, just is a little more anxious, it might take longer, but it's at least going to take two weeks before you actually clip a nail or sand with the emery board or sand with your Dremel. Um, and if needed, like I mentioned, use a new tool, use a new method. Watch for a poison tool or an environment. So that just means that um, if your dog already has a negative association with a specific tool, it's really important to just try a new one. And then of course the environment is important too. So if your dog um, you know, imagines your laundry room is a scary place maybe because the washing machine makes a noise or a dryer beeps and it's scary, 
don't use that space for nail trims. Um, start with a new location and that can really help. A new handler can help too. So if you're the one that always grooms your dog and you're struggling, um, having your partner try or having um, a dog friendly friend try can be helpful. That's where using a groomer can be helpful because sometimes they don't have that negative association. Um, but just something to think about. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get into the demo of showing you how to use a scratching board. So I've got Bitsy in a video here showing you how that works. So I want you guys to see the condition emotional response of this. He has just to the, the scratching board. So I get this out. She gets excited right away because she knows this is going to be fun. So I've got my scratching board that I made with the live presentation. And then I've got my hand on this tree. I have kind of a standard position that we do. And I'm going to put the stuff in the back of the day. She's deaf. So you'll see I use stand signals for her weight. And then I'm just going to put the stuff in the back of the day. And then she gets a reward, and Belle gets one for staying in her job. And you can see Bitsy is really good at this exercise now. I'll talk to you guys through how I taught it. But I'm watching to make sure that she uses both feet. If she doesn't, I'll wait. Good job, Bitsy. And until um, she uses both feet and then I'll reward. I do use the mark when I train this, but right now I'm not. I just use praise at this point in the game. Um, and then you <laughs> so good to see. Good job. I'm also going to turn the board to try to get those um, on my side left side nails. Otherwise, she'll just get her, her front two nails. Good job. Good job. And then again, I'm going to turn the board. And you can see Missy is really good at it and does a great job. If you guys have two dogs, don't feel like you have to do this. Just put one dog away and work with the other dog. And then before Missy gets done, I'm going to leave it where she is, you know, still wants to play the game. We finish a little bit early, so it's not to the point where she's slowing down. She's still engaged in the process. And I just say, good job, guys. All done. And that's like a good step to see. And then I get Belle one final treat. Good job. And we're all done. So that's it. That's the scratching board. Okay, so if you use a scratching board, make sure it's appropriate size for your dog. So you can see in this image, it's a much taller board for this um, border collie. I have a small board because I have smaller dogs. How I made it, it was really quite simple. Um, actually, my dad cut this board. It's like a, I don't know, one by four. Yeah, um, and it fits a standard size of um, sandpaper. So it's really nice if you have a small dog, you can just kind of use the standard size. And I just stapled it very simply and I stapled the ends too so that there weren't any edges for Bitsy to catch her nail on. So that was really easy. I have seen them on Etsy and on Chewy.com. Um, I like mine because when she wears it down a little, I can just replace the cover really nicely. So, and then how I taught the behavior. So I used capturing and a marker to teach Bitsy to do this behavior. And it's pretty easy if your dog already knows shake or if they tend to encounter their world by batting things with their paws or if they already dig. So that will already be a natural behavior for them. And you're just going to capture and um, mark and treat. 
So when I introduced the board to Bitsy, she naturally just kind of investigated it with her paw eventually. And it just took a few days for me to just catch her in the act of touching the board with her paw. I marked and treated and eventually she moved um, closer and closer to, it's called shaping, the idea of scraping the board with her paw. So I was careful what I marked and what I treated until we got to the final behavior that you saw on the video today. She was very fast at learning how to do that. It probably took three sessions till she understood she was actually supposed to dig at the board. Um, and she'll do it for a few minutes, like you saw in the video, until she gets tired um, and kind of loses interest. So I do this once a week or maybe twice a week with her just because it's really easy and she enjoys doing it. Um, and the back feet. So that's the challenging part with the scratching board is that it is only addressing the front paws, not the dew claws. So you are still going to have to use another tool to trim that. Um, I have heard of trainers that have taught their dogs to scratch their back feet, and I really want to teach my dog to do that. We're working on it. Um, I'm working on her stepping up steps so that her paws are touching, her back paws are touching the board. And then she hasn't quite got to the point of scratching with it yet. But when she does, I'll mark and treat, capture that. And um, I'm sure she'll be able to do that too. But for now, I just use the Dremel for her back feet. Also, I find that our do my dog's back feet tend to wear down faster um, naturally than their front feet nails. So that works really well with the scratching board for the front feet. So then they're kind of evened out just by going on walks and such. So here's the clippers. I don't have a demo for the Emery board. Um, I don't use it for my dog just because Bitsy thinks this is something fun to chew on. So that's not a good fit. And Belle does really well with the Dremel and the um, clippers. But this is easy to condition, just like the other tools I talked about, just taking it very slow, introducing the tool, introducing handling, putting it together a little bit at a time, even if it's just one nail until you can build up to doing the whole paw. If you've taught your dog a relaxation cue or mat training, that is a wonderful thing to use in the context of um, the Dremel use or the Emery board. So here's Belle, my Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, getting her nails clipped. So you can see um, the quick coming up to about here on Belle's nail, and then that eighth of an inch or so that I can cut off. I will come down, clip that much off, and that nail's done. Okay. So you can see how you can identify the quick. You can just take a little bit off with the clippers. Um, once you have kind of the paw in your hand and you have the nail, I press the nail out a little bit. You want to get down and clip it pretty quickly. My dog gets nervous if I like am positioning the clippers a lot. So if I can get down and do it quickly, great. Of course, don't clip the quick though. So um, that's it definitely takes a little bit of practice, but Belle handles it really well, and she loves to be held. So for a small dog, if your dog likes to be held, that's an easy thing to do. If I had a large dog, when I've trimmed the nails of larger dogs, I will actually squat next to them and pick up a paw, of course, after conditioning for paw handling, and then I will clip them kind of sitting parallel to them. Um, I do not recommend facing your dog head on or putting the peanut butter stuff on your forehead that was going around Facebook for a while. It's really great to associate good things with the clipping process or the nail trimming process, but um, that really leaves your, your face exposed to a bite in the event that you clipped a quick and your dog just reacted quickly. So, um, yep. Please don't do that. And if you can get a buddy to help you with the nail trimming process, especially if you have a big dog, that's great because they can be feeding your dog as you're manipulating their feet. So moving on to the Dremel, I'm going to show this technique with Belle as well because she doesn't mind it at all. So here's the Dremel. And again, I'm just taking a little bit off at a time. Good job, Belle. And here is a brown one. You guys can see, I can't really see the quick, so I'm just going to take a teeny off 
can you get off? And then I can look at the end of the nail to look to see if I see a quick coming. I don't really, so I'm going to do a little more. There you can start to see I'm getting closer to the quick. So I'm going to stop there for today. And um, she got a treat after that, and she really doesn't mind it at all, especially if cuddling is happening along with the nail trim. She's a really unusual dog that she loves to be held and hugged and cuddled. So my terrier, absolutely not. She's all about the food, and most of your dogs are probably um, going to prefer the food or a toy experience. You can also use things like a walk. So if your dog loves their walk, before you go on your walk every day, trim a nail and then the nail trimming process predicts the walk. So that is the correct order of conditioning um, to have your dog love the nail trimming because that predicts a really fun time going outside with their owner. So that is the Dremel. Um, so like I said, if you guys have any questions, here's my phone number. I didn't put my email address up here, but it's info at politepawsfw.com. You can get on the website and send in a contact form, of course. My email address is there as well. So um, those are the techniques that I recommend. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, have fun training your dogs and, and teaching them a new skill, bonding with your dog. Bye-bye.